I'm gonna hide this tape when I'm finished. If none of us make it, at least there'll be some kind of record. Never grow old, Michael. The blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. Showdown. Recording in progress. All right, so success. Welcome, <laughs> hell yeah! Welcome everybody to Sinister Scripts podcast, where we've got our first time on video doing an interview, and we are here with Jamie Schmidt. Hello, Jamie. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, good. So, good, it, Am I... I feel like there's a little bit of a lag. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens with this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's all good. So yeah, so we want we're on here. Just to... Go ahead. Oh, is there oh no! I was I was doing a test to see if it actually would end up coming. I was just seeing if the the camera would come over to me. Oh uh, yeah, I, I think there's I think there's like a there's some setting in here. I don't. I'm not really sure as far it, as it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Fuck it. So, but yeah, we wanted to come on here and um, talk with you, Jamie, about your movie. So um, you had the opportunity to you know make your own horror movie which is something i think a lot of us aspire to do and uh mm-hmm. so let's go ahead and i mean david i'll let you start with your your thoughts we want to do like a a rundown of the movie or just i guess you could just tell us maybe jamie what like what made you want to make a movie we'll start there yeah i mean it's always kind of been like that's always been something i've wanted to do ever since i was a kid you know it's just practicing in front of my grandma and stuff and my grandpa gave me one of those old jvc with the with the many uh the mini tapes that you put into the big VCR tape. Do you remember those tapes? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, those recorders. Those were a yeah. lot of fun. And, yeah. um, and yeah, no, for me, uh, yeah, I've always, I've always been playing around with cameras and stuff. It's something I've always wanted to do, but this isn't the first time I've made a movie. Um, okay. About yeah. I was going to ask you, I think six, you got a couple, seven, right? Yeah. Yeah. About five, six, seven years ago. Now uh, I produced my first movie here in Dubuque, but that one was called black Friday. And I've been trying to bury it since because I was like, oh, my God, I'm, <laughs> oh, no. I'm not even there's, there's a little bit of like uh, cringe. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what? It was a good stepping stone to like figure out where I want to go and what I want to do. Yeah. But I've always wanted to do a horror movie. OK. And I thought of like, you know, you had the old video rental stores and you would have because I was there when the VHS I may have been born 94, but I remember VHS tapes on the shelves. So I yeah. wanted something that like back in the early 80s you would have saw it sitting between nightmare on elm street and slaughter high or whatever mm-hmm. and i wanted because back then if you had jaws you had orca you had piranha there was everybody trying to compete to mm-hmm. be the next not the originality of like let's do something new it's let's bank off of what was already successful same thing uh friday 13th did with halloween mm-hmm. right and so i was like i love the title i know what you did last summer mm-hmm and so I was like, let's give it, what, what could be like a good drawing title? I was like, what about Are You Dead Yet? Has that, has that ever been done before? And then everywhere I go, Children of Boss would come on. I was like, all right, well, fine. But uh, yeah, it's it's your basic <laughs> run of the mill in the woods, the guy in the mask and the, the dumb kids going out there. So, right. Yeah. But I feel like that's a yeah. tale as old as time. Actually seen it. Oh, yeah. And both of you have seen yeah. it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. We, we watched it. I watched I've only seen it once. Um, I need to go back and watch it again because um, I feel like it took me a couple of times because I was like, I have a seven year old and she likes to interrupt. I'm like, OK, pause, pause. Right. She's like, who's that guy? <laughs> What's that guy wearing that mask for? What's he doing? Why is he in the woods? I'm like, OK, you know what? Like, <laughs> <Go away. laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I need to go back and rewatch it. But I will say, like, it, it, I almost feel like if it's not broke, don't fix it. And I feel like there's so many <laughs> horror movies. Like you said, I remember going to Blockbuster. I was actually just talking with with a friend, and I was like, "Man, remember the like Friday night? You go to Blockbuster and you would like pick out a movie based on the cover art." <laughs> and like, I miss that. I miss like I feel like streaming is so great, but also streaming has like made it so like it's almost like information is in your so much it's in my face and it's almost like I, my ADD doesn't know what to do with it it's like right. there's 3,000 movies and I find myself just like scrolling rather than just picking <laughs> something based on the cover art and just going with it yeah I oh, agree yeah. and like, and remember like I was bitching to you the other day about how Target was like yeah we don't carry physical movies anymore and I got so pissed off <laughs> <laughs> like I like like streaming's great and all but I feel like streaming should be used for like 
something that you don't plan on owning. Like, I don't want to buy this movie, but I sure as hell want to watch it for free. You know, then that's great. But it's like, if I want to buy the movie and support it, then I want to be able to buy the damn movie, you know, and actually. Gotcha. I got. Yeah, you know? exactly. Exactly. So, all right. So let's, let's, let's get into a little bit more. So let's talk about some of the challenges of doing a movie, Jamie, like, especially when you're doing like an indie, the first thing that's coming to mind is like, it's gotta be budget, right? Um, are you comfortable? Can you tell us how much did, how much did it cost to make this movie? I'm curious. $2,000. Okay. Yeah. That's, see, I mean, see that that's incredible to me. That's like, it is yeah. what people are able to accomplish with like limited budgets is, is amazing. And I think that like, I don't know. To me, it didn't feel like I was watching a movie that cost two thousand bucks. What did it? What did it look like to you? What What did it feel like? It felt like it felt kind of grindhouse. It felt like it was kind of like that dirty, gritty. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of what I got in my my first initial reaction to it. And Absolutely, I mean, without yeah. getting like too too far ahead, like I freaking love the character, like Mache. Like that's that's fit. That's great. I thought that the mask. I thought the whole idea of that. I really enjoyed that. And like yeah. it was it was a slasher, but it also was like it was unique. I will say that I wasn't a huge fan of the hammer, but I heard that maybe you weren't as well. I think David was. You were so like oh, that yeah. hammer. The yeah. hammer wasn't originally going to be a hammer. The hammer okay. was going to be a sludge. And okay. I found out afterwards there was this movie called Sludge Hammer, the shot on video movie back in the day. Oh, and I was like well, we can't do that. So we ended up. So what happened? The reason we found the the mallet. The mallet was the mallet. That and yeah, it, it was. It's a big Harley Quinn mallet. So the reason we ended up with the mallet is we went to an antique store to look for. Um, to look for weapons like these old like farmer tools and stuff like that because you know we're out here in iowa oh you go to an antique store you're gonna find old stuff and right. we found this this mallet was just sitting there for 50 bucks so we bought it and i kind of looked at this thing and it's heavy as hell by the way that was the, big problem. <laughs> now, the problem with the mallet was it was so heavy and i'm not like this physically fit guy i may be six foot five and I'm, i may look like a lumberjack but i'm not a lumberjack i'm in like incredible <laughs> shape so trying to swing this thing around is a nightmare but right. half, we didn't even get a, a prop mallet we, we made a prop mallet halfway through filming and that thing was lightweight so i was like i thought about it at first i was like and anytime jason carries around a mache mm. or a mache jason carries around a machete how yeah. often does he really use it though he doesn't really use it that often he maybe yeah like maybe ways, right he finds all these other creative ways to kill people so the ma- yeah. mallet is basically like the, the whole point of it is to be that mainstay, but that's your first kill with the thing. You, mm-hmm. you, it's, it's basically implied to be his version of Jason's machete. But, you know, there's always, every time they make another movie, he's carrying an axe, he's carrying like, um, he's carrying a big old pitchfork, like pitch hitch fork. sorts of shit. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's got something different every single time. Okay. And so the idea is maybe the next movie, like, we'll, we'll downgrade the mallet and we'll give him like a predator wrist blade or something like that. It's just really crappy. <laughs> oh, fuck. Something. Oh, yeah. Hey, that. <laughs> that would that be would amazing. Be with it. That yeah. would be awesome. Okay. This, so it makes, yeah, it makes so much more sense now, like hearing your vision for where it needs to go. And I like that idea then I'm yeah, like, like, cause you said like, he doesn't always use the same thing. I mean, the only ones I can think of like, yeah, Michael Myers, like his, his knife, like that's the thing, but he also uses yeah. other things too. So I like the idea of like, right making it different weapons as the the story progresses so i guess with that being said you're you have plans for future stories oh yeah no so i didn't even like we don't even have a distributor lined up yet um as far as when we had a red carpet we had a red carpet premiere back in june and i was sitting there thinking oh you know 50 people are going to show up ha 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 they're like we're not we rocked the house the whole house holds about 600 people we had 358 wow. people show up on one oh, of the yeah. busiest nights in debut that's, awesome. Where they had like that's awesome nine different events going on so everybody the way that we ended the movie and by by this point you know I, I'll, I'll say it the way that we ended the movie with with the cops is mm-hmm. like everybody is saying you ended that like that how wins part two you cannot end it like that that's exactly, exactly what i thought i love the everybody's ending. like it's like bullshit you're not going to do another story so yeah. we have plans or when i say we i mean me because obviously i'm <laughs> writing the script but i do have plans for an are you dead yet part two and then the part three will inevitably be a crossover now whether it's with 
I, I have a couple different people I could potentially talk to really? about crossing over with their independent characters. I probably won't get Damien to say yes for Art the Clown. As much as that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. He's, he's, yeah. he's, 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 he's on a whole nother level right now. It would be oh, yeah. nice, but he's on mm-hmm. a whole nother level. So I'm ta- so I'll probably be talking to these other people that I that I do know and see if they'd be interested in doing a like the Freddy versus Jason type uh, WWE style versus movie. <laughs> and if they're, if they're not for it, which that would be already dead dead part three, but if they're okay. not for it, we'll create an original character to do it. Somebody to, uh, for Mache to fight. And the idea behind that is Mache is this simplistic character. It's the mask, the the shirt and, and the mallet. And then this mm-hmm. other guy has to be this like crazy complex looking character, like the, almost like this Jeepers Creepers type guy that's just mm-hmm. full on. You you have to think about this character, like you have to plan it out carefully and like mm-hmm. execute it to like this insane degree of like give somebody this physicality because you know Mache is like the brute force, so you need like the little yeah. scrapyard dog yes. to just be like ha ha ha, you're a joke, and then then that- then they just go all right. We're going toe to toe. Yeah, that's nice. what that's what that's what made but, Freddy versus Jason work so well. Was you Jason was the brute, and then you got Freddy, who was like this, like was going to taunt you, and he was fast, and he was like quick and witty. And I think that's what made the 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 dynamic work. So that's that's a good idea. I'd be interested to see what character you come up with if you don't find somebody to work with. That would be interesting. That oh yeah, cool. I think Joe Bob Briggs put it the best when he was like, "Freddy's like the smartest villain in history, and Jason's a mongoloid. How fair could that fight be?" <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting there thinking because I heard a rumor about um, when they were going to originally end Freddy versus Jason. Now I don't know what the truth behind this is, but originally the ending was supposed to be the uh, the water, a hole in the lake opens up, and Freddy and Jason go swirling down into the hole. And um, and they end up in hell. And the second they stand up to go a third round, chains show up out of the darkness and snag their arms. And they okay. go like this. And Pinhead was supposed to walk in I, and be like, I've boys, heard, what's the problem? Yeah, I've heard that too. So, the Hellraiser so apparently they, they didn't do that because they didn't want to pay for Pinhead, even though it would have been like the easiest buy because mm-hmm. he's, not, he's not that expensive in an IP. But what I want to do... Is I if 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 I have it my way, and if I'm able to make it work, and if I can if I can pull this off, I'm going to do what Freddy versus Jason never did, and I'm going to say this because now as of now it's just an idea, yeah. so it's not set in concrete. So as an idea, I'm 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 just going to say it. So what'll happen is Mache and this other guy will just disappear, and everybody will be like, where did they go? Nobody gets, nobody kills the other guy. And they both just wake up in this, in this room that's filled with smoke and cloud and, and they get up and they're, they're even confused. And in from the darkness walks as, walks in as many independent horror characters that I can possibly try to get wow. on board as candidates. <laughs> that's so I'm awesome. thinking about maybe I can reach out. Maybe I'm, I, I'm going to try to see if, if I can make this happen, I would like to try to reach out for a uh, turkey from Thanks Killing. I'd like to. I'd Hell like yeah. to hit up Damien to see. If he, I'd like to hit up Damien to see if he'd be cool with uh, with just a silhouette of Art the Clown, not even like David, yeah. just just like the silhouette of knowing he's in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, right. my my friend Tim, he made a movie Death to Metal. I'd like to see uh, uh his character, uh, Father Kilborn, in the room. He's a, a mutated priest, kind of like the Toxic Avenger. If you haven't seen Death to Metal, you need to see Death to Metal. Okay. Uh, my friend Tony Cooney's movie Leaf Blower Massacre. Uh, his character <laughs> walking to the room, and then you have like this uh, this Agent Smith looking guy from uh, from uh, Matrix, Matrix walking and be like, "You two, I'm sorry, you guys thought you were the only ones. Well, welcome to the new world." And it basically is the implication is the the old the old way with Hollywood, the Hollywood monsters. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, Damien, Damien did do something incredible here as an independent movie in theaters, theatrically right now with Terrifier 3, he basically said independent movies are now the way. Right. And yeah. that's the idea For that sure. I want. A third movie is now independent horror movies, independent monsters are the new wave of Freddy, Jason, Chucky, Pinhead, Michael, Leatherface. That's yeah. the new wave. It's like the multiverse of, yeah. of, of horror villains. <laughs> Just it, yeah, a and then the start of a new generation of stuff. Oh, right. 
Right. Absolutely. Because that would be the, because the whole idea behind it is like people are now familiarized with Winnie the Pooh, blood and honey. We got scream boat coming out that there was a Grinch horror movie and yep, these Bambi. are all independent movies that are now getting theatrical re- releases. Yeah. Like these, this is the new wave of horror. Yep. That's awesome. And that's kind of where I want to take it. Okay. That's, that's, that's very ambitious and I'm excited yeah. to see if you can would, get there. Like that would be, that, yeah. Yeah, I love, listen, I love, like, David and I, you know, for the past few years have gone to Days of the Dead in Atlanta, the horror convention, and wh- I don't know about David, I know he enjoys it, but I, one of my favorite parts is is the independent film festival, like, where yeah. you see all these people that are entering their films that are doing this for shoestring budgets, that are filming this in the the parking lot of their apartment complex, and you've you got a few bigger ones, oh, like, uh, like the Cannibal Comedian, I think that was, like, the feature film this year this yeah, past year so. but like i think seeing what it, they're able to do is just i don't know to me it's super impressive we've got another um there's another film actually that i'm trying to work with to get them to come on and talk about it on the podcast it's, a, it's basically called it was called red hot was it called red blood red blues red, yeah blood red blues and it was basically about like they did it during COVID times and it was basically like, Hey, Dracula had these brides. Well, Dracula has since passed away and these brides live on. So what are these brides doing? Because it's not easy for them to find food during the pandemic. So one of them was like working at a gas station. One of them was working like dead end jobs because they're having like, it's basically like, it's like, what would happen if the brides like, you know, they're going through the same struggles that we were during COVID, right? Social yep. distancing. First of they're all, having a hard- first of all- First of all, send me that movie after this because now I have to watch that movie. Yeah. And second of all, yes. Um, so Days of the Dead, we go to Days of the Dead in Chicago all the time. Okay. One of my favorite things about Days of the Dead is seeing all the – It's you can go to these like uh, C2E2s and they're all about celebrities. And it's like, I, I love, I look, I love meeting celebrities. I really do. It's it, but for 15 minutes to stand there in line mm-hmm. uh, or at least an hour to stand in line for 10 seconds, just to say hi and bye and get a signature. That's, that's mm-hmm. not, I mean, that's not the interaction where it's like, that's not the draw for me. The draw for me are the vendor tables where it's like they have the, the, the DVDs, the comic books, the, um, the VCR tapes. I'm a huge VHS collector. In fact, okay. are you dead yet? At some point, I'm hoping to get a v- VCR release of because I love that VHS. Awesome. And, and I love talking to every booth of an independent filmmaker. And, and they're sitting there selling their copies of, um, of uh I, I i just met this guy james dean he he uh he had this movie xxxmas and it just just talking to these guys and, and seeing how they do their stuff and and meeting people it's like it's one of the most interesting things because as a filmmaker as somebody that didn't go to film school and i did not as somebody that didn't you can watch what they do and you can learn a lot from them mm-hmm. and you can and you can take inspiration on how they do their work and how they do their craft and maybe it might help you to to do a better to do not maybe not even better but also easier it might make your life a little bit easier so you can learn a lot from these guys but you also want to buy their work too because they're selling their blu-rays and dvds and their vhs's and you want to support each other because we're because we're all in this together we're not mgm isn't knocking on our door i'm pretty sure mgm doesn't even exist anymore but (laughs) but (laughs) we get what you're saying yeah they're yeah, they're not knocking on our doors. So right. we're all in this together. So the fact of the matter is, you know, I'm going to go support you. And right. we're going to you make a friend or two down the line. And then, you know, you go from there. Yeah, well, and that's, that's what's, what's all about. And that's what's cool about what Damien has done is like Damien kicked down the fucking door. Like Damien kicked the fucking door down and he's like, Hey, independent film is here. And you know what? I had a $500,000 budget for, for advertising and the Joker had a $200 million budget and we just blew the fucking doors off those guys. Like that to me is like impressive. And I'm excited because this has been a great year for horror overall. Like just Mm, absolutely. This year has been awesome for horror, I think. And so I feel like Damien. Damien had a good head on his shoulders. I feel like he knew what he was doing. I feel like he knew he was going to be successful in in the manner of playing cards, right? But I don't think he knew it was going to reach this level. In the same way that I, like, when we had a red carpet, I didn't think 358 people were going to show up. I thought, haha, 50 people. I don't think when he made that uh, All Hallows' Eve, I don't think Mm -hmm. he realized once we got to Terrifier 3, it was going to play at 8 see in every major theater 
like mm-hmm. right, yeah, on around the that's season. a huge accomplishment. I don't think he realized that. right, it and is. that's why him he's like yeah, yeah. We went he went from like fifty thousand dollars on the first movie to two million on the third movie. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. like, what have we done? Yeah. I'm sure is what he's thinking. <laughs> well, that's what's impressive. Well, that's the thing to me is like I feel like if you can have like he struck gold with like art the clown like if you can have that character right that's iconic like which art has become i feel like the rest of it you can you can build around you can learn like and he certainly has learned from going back to all hallows eve through and like with his filmmaking he's learned different techniques and it's gotten and it's markably better each film and so kind of circling back to to your movie jamie that's why i think i like the character of mache and so i think you got something there and i'm interested to see like if you have that character and you can kind of transition that into like some of the ideas you have i'm super I'm, i want to see what you're i mean what you, what you come up with i i'm i, I hope yeah. and obviously finances it's a big part of it you, you can't just go out and be like hey i'm oh, gonna yeah. go make an expensive movie because like you don't have two or three hundred or four hundred thousand dollars just sitting around but exactly yeah. exactly so i mean you, I, I work yeah oh i'm sorry go, go ahead no, no no i was just gonna ask if you could tell me like i know we kind of alluded to a little bit of like the jasons and the freddies being inspirations was that the inspiration behind the character was it for so, it yeah no like yeah as far as you know like like i said you want to you want to pay homage to the idea that this was like a knockoff of of the early slasher movies of the 80s okay. and it like what I, I i was i was actually gonna get into that which is funny before i interrupted you so i'm sorry no, about that. No, 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 um, um yeah art unlike art which was a very very well thought out character where it's like mm-hmm. art is like just this guy that just despises the human race mache <laughs> is definitely kind of in vain with jason in a way not where he's like a carbon copy jason but in the second one um like he's kind of a he's kind of a, a mixture i feel like the direction i want to go is you explore like his abandonment as a kid um there there's a whole there's a whole storyline that i'm like either i could go this route and okay. give him a sympathetic card, or I can continue to give him absolutely no backstory with no explanation as to who he is, where he's come from, or why he does what he does. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of what the first one does. We didn't really lay out a background story. Sure. We just said, there's a guy in the woods, this is what he does. We never mm-hmm. actually thought, well, like, who is he? <laughs> yeah. Why who is he? What, what is he what's his yeah. deal? Yeah, we, we didn't, I didn't really want to, I didn't really want to do that. And so the second one, like I said, I could either go this route where I have an idea for what I want to do, but it's, but unlike somebody who wants to watch the world burn, it's, it's more or less, I feel like I, if I, if I end up going the Freddy versus Jason route, I don't want to repeat the mistake that they made of making Jason an anti-hero in that movie. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. And that I kind of feel like that's where it's accidentally going to end up going. So if I do it, I actually have to think of a well-crafted backstory if I'm going okay. to do that. And that's kind of like, time. yeah, I like the idea of like giving a little bit, like just breadcrumbs, just enough to kind of keep people interested, but also still wondering more, yeah. right? Like, like I think that's, more, that, yeah. yeah, you don't like if you like that way you can kind of continue that into a third movie if you, you know, if that's the direction you decide to take it, but also still leaves them a little bit mysterious because I think it lets the the human mind and the human element of like letting your imagination run wild a bit too. So I actually I take I take that back I take back everything that I just said for one <laughs> second because <laughs> because I, I totally I totally forgot the whole point of when I had the first draft written. By the way, this this script went through seven different uh, script changes. Wow! Oh, wow! Okay. Seven script changes. The very first draft, Mache had a brother. Okay. And the this this is where it was this is where it got really interesting. The whole trope was I thought of that movie House of Wax. It's mm. a fantastically mm. sick movie. It is mm-hmm. a it is a it's a sickening movie to watch, and I love every minute of it. <laughs> and um and the brother was going to be this well groomed, handsome guy, and Mache was basically the brunt and the boil. And they were both obviously cannibals. Like they 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 fed off of people out in the woods just to survive. And and the okay. brother was the really really smart one who came up with websites and lured people into the woods. And the only reason we didn't go that route. Is because <laughs> that, that's Cal. You have officially met Cal. That's cool. He's, 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 Cal, Cal's a good guy. Uh, but yeah, the reason, the only reason we didn't go that route is if you've noticed in the movie, 
the, the, the ratio of male to female, there's a lot of females in the movie. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. there's a ton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I had more male friends, that were the, I, <laughs> and I do have male friends, but if I had more male friends that would have been like, yeah, I'll be in this movie, we would have went with the brother thing. We yeah, didn't okay. have that brother thing, which wasn't actually a good idea because yeah. nobody wanted to play the brother. Really? I just saw a, sh- so I just saw a shirtless doing- guy with long hair. What if he's, he, is he interested? <laughs> <laughs> he's well, he's more well-toned than I am right now. So I'll give him full props for that. Oh, That's I do funny. have a question. Um, I mean, to be fair, I am in his house, so. Yeah, right. <laughs> so the, uh, hey, Jamie. So the, but yeah, it all was. Oh, I'm sorry. So I, I just had sorry. A there's kind of a it, lag. It's, that's my bad. Yeah. yeah, it's all right. It's kind of might tie into what you were just talking about. How you might sprinkle a little bit more into the next movie. Um, so I don't know if you could answer it or not. But the mask that he makes at the beginning is that the first one that he ever makes? And also, does he make like a new one every time he kills somebody? Because it looked like he was using part of that person's face in the mache. Which that's absolutely um, so. Yeah, there is there is a face that he uses to mold the mask around. Um, I kind of like the idea that maybe he make because in the next movie he'll definitely end up making a new mask. The way I see yeah. it is with every movie, um, every movie the sequel that they make, like Leprechaun, for instance. If you look at the Leprechaun, um, Warwick Davis in every movie has you 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 notice it maybe here or there. But but like the first movie he had short hair. The second movie he had long hair. He went from a red shirt to a blue shirt to um, he had a full blown. Um, he had green skin and he had burn scales and and they always changed the design. Mm-hmm. That every sequel, bit, Freddy yeah. Krueger, for instance, like the um, like the first movie versus the second movie. And the way I see it is, I want he'll have a different design in the second movie, okay. but you have to give him a reason as to why he has a different design as the continuing the story it's kind of like uh like winnie the pooh blood and honey they had so much money for this mm-hmm. for the first movie and then they have so much money for the second movie obviously you're going to have a big difference in in the way you look exactly yeah. now that do, that doesn't matter to me they whatever our budget is on the second movie it's going to go into if we get a bigger budget budget for the second movie it'll go into equipment to make the movie look better it'll go into possibly getting a a a, a, a decent horror uh cameo that everybody go be like how the hell did you get that person in the movie <laughs> oh, <not> yeah. money <laughs> <laughs> but i want to give him a legit reason to actually have a new wardrobe so um he'll have a new mask and a new shirt but there will be a reason as to why he has that Okay, right. Instead on. of just like, oh, he just showed up in a new wardrobe. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Well, didn't his mask broke at the end, right? Like, didn't it get smashed? <laughs> no. <laughs> People haven't seen it yet. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Way to go, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. Okay. To be fair, uh, yeah. No, the mask broke at the end. So yeah, we will. We'll definitely have a. Uh, we'll definitely. That that's actually going to be the reason why the mask will look slightly different in the second movie. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what I spent ten minutes trying to apply without well, saying it outright. Hey! Oh, you know what? That's what I'm here for. That's why they. That's why Ryan calls me dickhead. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> it's you're fired. People, people, people will like that scene when they see it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. Speaking of which, um, that final girl moment at the end, the fi- i should say the final girls, mm-hmm. which that that was probably one of my favorite things to film. Although we had a bunch of concrete mix in the air in a musty Ooh. basement, so we had to evacuate Ooh. for like an hour. That was fun. Yikes! <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, well, it was a got, like, yeah, went on for like three three years of my life that took between writing, editing, and, and filming. And you know, I'm very, I'm very proud. Yeah, and eventually, when be, people yeah. see it and we get a distributor lined up, I hope people do enjoy it. So yeah, tell me what, movie. tell me what your biggest, like, what you felt your biggest challenge was. And I feel like it's easy to say the budget was the biggest challenge because I understand that. But I feel like there's got to be some other things that are just as challenging. Surprisingly, my. Money doesn't money doesn't affect me the way that it would affect other people because I'm used to working for pennies on the dollar. People 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 work for dollars. I work, work for pennies. I'm mm-hmm. for some reason. I, I normally I, I I'm I'm a very like humble person and I don't say I'm I'm great at this or this or this. There's one mm-hmm. thing I will say that I'm very good at. 
and it's I'm very good at convincing people to do things <laughs> for almost next to nothing. All right. So I need a build. I need I need a building here. I need a uh, I need a building here. I need a house there. I'm like, hey, do you mind if I film in your in your basement? Hey, do you mind if I film at your house? Hey, do you mind if I do this or this? And they're like, yeah, sure. Hey, do you want to be in my movie? By the way, I'm like, sure. And what What's nice about living in Dubuque is people are so people look after each other. Like we're we're mm-hmm. we're a very tight knit community here. So if yeah. they know you're doing something, they're it's not that they want a piece of the pie. They're like, how can I help? Yeah, and they're mm-hmm. very, very. Uh, that's why I love living in Dubuque. Here, we're so we're a tight knit community. They look out for each other, and mm-hmm. that's why money will never be an issue as far as that goes. I can shoot for like a hundred dollars, and be like, and they'll be like, yeah, sure. I think the most the most of the money goes into like makeup, and um, and food and gas for the most part. Right is where most of the money goes into. Or, you know, it, it, it depends on like, you know, it mar- mostly on top of that, you know, you got to cover marketing costs and mm-hmm. running ads and this and that. And the money is very well spent. And then, you know, renting out at venues and then you have to think about film festival submissions and it all adds up. So it, it does go exactly where it needs to go. But as far as, um, sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Just the biggest challenge, your biggest, biggest challenge. challenge. <laughs> Editing. <laughs> editing is a can I say that? Is that is that okay to Go say? Yeah. Is that okay to swear? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Editing is a <laughs> fucking nightmare. <laughs> Fuck editing. I can't Fuck imagine editing. Fun. Editing is a nightmare. Yeah. Sorry, I was talking to no, talking No, you're to good. Cal so did, did you do yeah, editing, did, editing is, you, man. <laughs> did you do it all yourself? Did you do all the editing yourself? Yes, yes. I did I did everything myself down to the CGI. It's so oh. let me let me put it to you this way if you want to know everything that we used to make this movie we used the lo- the cheapest canon you can think of the canon eos 4000d it's your most standard canon camera okay. we use that adobe premiere not adobe premiere pro adobe mm-hmm. premiere elements for like your 80 dollar uh bs version from uh best buy <laughs> that's okay. what i'm ed- that's what i've been editing with for 10 years um i get all my audio done i i use this website uh fever f-i-v-e-r-r these mm-hmm. wonderful wonderful guys in india they clean up my audio for like 20 dollars for like 15 minutes if you if you're if you're an independent filmmaker you're listening to this use use fever wonderful tool and and um and yeah just as far as all that goes it's like i'm working on a laptop that that overheats all the time runs tons of problems <laughs> when, when we shot the movie three years ago we shot the movie. We had about 15 minutes of the movie shot and the hard drive crashed, crashed, oh, burned, deleted everything. Oh, and we shit. had to start all over from scratch. And fortunately, I was I was kind of glad that that happened oh, yeah? because ha ha ha. The stuff we did the second time, I liked well, that's more. Good. Yeah. Blessing so in disguise. It's like, so it's like we, we knew what we were doing. Exactly. Because it's like, you know, you, you knew what you were doing the first time. So you do it better the second time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. So um, kind of back to what you said, you said that uh, you, you're very good at convincing people to like do things for you here and there and like, hey, you want to be in my movie. So with that being said, we're most of, like the actors, are they friends of yours? Are all of them friends of yours? We're all we're all friends. We're all buddies. That's awesome. We go golfing. We go drinking. You, you okay. go through my Facebook and be like, hey, he's a, <laughs> we know those guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it, the, the red carpet was probably the most uh, bank breaking thing I've ever done in my entire life. But it but I felt like that was the biggest thank you I could have possibly given back. Just that one night where you dress up in tuxes yeah. and dresses and you feel like you feel like you've earned that. And they did earn yeah. that. They worked three years relentlessly with me on this okay. project. It, yeah, none yeah. of this I could have made it if they didn't if no if nobody had said yes, I would have made this with stick people and wouldn't have worked this way. <laughs> but I made this with wonderful people. It's true though. It's true. It's cool. I made it with wonderful people, committed, dedicated people who did it for literally nothing. Just for That's just awesome. for one night of them to be like, hell yes, let's let's watch what we did, and that was the yeah. best feeling. It's fucking amazing. That's awesome. So, what's your time look like, Jamie? I know you have some things going on. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, what's my time look like? Um, it's kind of kind of kind of ready to act, actually uh, actually ready to to start things out there, I guess. So, oh, perfect. Uh, we'll, we'll, how, long we, how long have we been on, by the way? 
Um, I actually, it, we're just at right about 40 minutes. Um, I actually went ahead and upgraded our account because we've got some other vid- videos to do and some other interviews to coming up in the, in the upcoming week. So I figured let's go ahead and spend 15 bucks. <laughs> let's get unlimited time. It's probably <laughs> going to be worth well it. Yeah. Probably. Oh man. I'm sorry. That sucks. I, and I'm like Kevin Smith. I love to talk. I love to hear the sound of my own voice. I'm a little egotistical like that. I don't like to admit. <laughs> no, that's no problem. We we no problem, uh, David man. and I actually had. I think a, Kevin uh, Smith is egotistical. Don't get me wrong. He <laughs> did yeah. make tusk. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Me, me and Kevin. David put Kevin together Kevin like a Smith. horror a horror movie bracket. We were going to get your opinion on, but we, would, we don't want to keep you. Oh no 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 no! Here, re- real quick, get my opinion on it. All right, let me see if I can. I cannot minimize Zoom. All right, let me see if I can pull up. Uh, the problem while he's is, doing, yeah, go ahead, David. I was going to say while he's doing that, um, Jamie, if there's any way with your sequel, if you could somehow shoehorn Jimmy back into it, even though you killed him off, I would love to see him in the sequel. <laughs> he was my favorite character, Jimmy. Oh yeah, the don't, Steph, Steph is Steph's actually working on Steph's working on his own movie right now. Is he really? I'm not going to reveal what Steph's concept is for his own movie, but yeah, he is. He's funny. If you don't know Steph, you need to check out his TikTok. Ste- uh, Steph and Mouse. He has some of the funniest stuff on TikTok you'll ever see. Okay, really? so check that out. that man is a true comedy legend. Actually, uh, Dusty, come here for a second. It's the egg, the uh, egg and milk shake. That this is Dave. Really this is Dave from oh, the hey, movie. What's this up, is man? Dusty. Yeah. So, <laughs> what's actually, going on? He's he's the one that's swinging in the cabin. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Hell yeah! And I get my head back. Yeah. <laughs> And then this is uh this is Clara, so she'll she'll be in the sequel. This will be this will be the new final nice girl in the sequel now. I look crazy. <laughs> that's awesome. It looks awesome. <laughs> yeah. So David, yeah, I can't so find that's all, of our, all of our actual rankings, so we'd have to redo it. I don't want to keep oh, Jamie on there. I know. I, I know. I mean we could we could <laughs> do it really fast. It. Whatever's easiest okay. for you guys. All right. Here, let's do this. Let me let me see if I can share my screen here and see if it'll work. Right. Let's see. Okay turn my light on i'll be right back you gotta go nowhere it is kind of dark in there i'm gonna get an old fashioned so it's all good Ugh. So, oh, yeah, we were bracket right there, there. yeah so i know for a fact we had halloween as a one seed and let me see can i make yeah, thing this? was two alien alien was three alien was three all right oh so this is this is your bracket for which which uh, Halloween movie would you think is? Oh, okay, I see what you're doing now. Yeah, yeah. So let's hide that. All right. So then D- let's see Dusty, here. You want to weigh, want to weigh in on this with me? Sure. Let's see. We got the thing. So they're doing they're doing the bracket. Oh shit! This Ernest is... scared stupid. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, what else did we have in here? I can't remember. Uh, uh, all right. So, so we'll let them leave. Let's see, we had Killer Killer Clown right. right. four. Killer Clowns was four. Killer Clowns was four. And that was yours or mine? That was mine. That was you? Okay. Not that it matters, right. but we'll just... Uh, what else? Oh, I had uh, As Above, So Below. Yep. Let's see here. Um, I know we had... Um, <clears throat> I had that one, uh, like Jack Brooks movie. Monster Slayer. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. Jack Brooks Slayer. And that's David. Uh, David, you were Alien too, right? Yeah, you got you to gotta put... You got a D next to Lost Boys. You can change that for yours. Oh, yeah, that was me. That's right. Um, what else do we have? Oh, we had a. Uh, I we had, had. We had uh, Jason X. That was yes. A <laughs> I don't care. Jason X wins. <laughs> I don't care. Jason X is, is so <laughs> it's good. I already got my vote. <laughs> um, I, we I did. Disagree. I don't care what's up oh. against Jason. I think no, that's chop- not fair. You see, you can't have a third party weigh in when we're disagreeing. Right. <laughs> now, you have, yeah. have four, now you have four parties. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ryan, you had child I'm play. Just, oh, I'm just oh, kidding. I'm just kidding. You had Nightmare Dream Warriors, didn't you? Ryan? Yeah, Nightmare Dream Warriors, I think, was was it 10? Yours. Hell, I don't remember the first. Where's Dream Master? Dream Master is the best one. Um... We also had yeah we had Jason X. Um, we oh, had... I had Trick or Treat. Oh yeah, we put that one at like twelve. Yeah, solid, solid choice. Uh, that was David's. Um... Oh, uh, the original Dawn of the Dead. I had that one. I think that okay. was five. Five. Okay, let's put I that think. at five. Now, is this the OG or the remake? The OG. The OG. Um, let's see here. Okay, so we got six, six, nine, and eleven left. So let's do. 
Do we do? We did. Okay, we have Jason. We have a. We have oh, a Jaws, Freddy. Jaws. 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 Was, Jaws yeah. was. Yeah. Jaws. Jaws was. That was mine. <laughs> And then, what are we oh, gonna man. do? Let's see here. What else are we gonna do? Um, we'll put an Evil Dead one on there since we didn't the original time. We can't remember. <laughs> okay, Evil Dead can't be eleven. We gotta do. Should we do Evil Dead one or two? Two. Go with two. I gotta yeah, say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I'll make that David's. I'll make this the child's play. That was you, I think. No, that was yours. Oh, uh, was it? Yeah. And then, if it was child's one. play two, that would be, be a tougher decision. Yeah. <laughs> um I what if we do I'm trying to think of eleven. What would be like an, an eleven ranked horror movie? Predator. Like, good. That's a good one. Because we have Jaws aliens. for Jaws versus Predator. I, I have no doubt right. in this fight. I hope they All right, so <laughs> exactly. let's start it let's start at the top and let's start with the one versus oh, the sixteen. Damn. Dude. So, so let them <laughs> let them go first and then we weigh in. Gotcha. So my vote, my vote is. I mean, David, you can go first. This is these are both your picks. So who who do you who well, wins this matchup? I think you had Jason X, but who who gives a shit at this point? Um, that's fine. I don't know, man. Like I kind of wish Jason X wasn't in the 16 spot, so it can at least kind of go to the next round because because it's amazing. Because it's amazing. Like when and he freezes her face and then smashes it to bits. Smashes it. Yeah. I mean, there were so many fun kills in that. Um, but then you can't, I mean, how can you take out the original Halloween? That's like, we can't, I don't think we can have a 16 one upset. It doesn't ever happen. It's never, it never happens. So I'm going to um, go with Halloween. Yeah. As much as I hate to have Jason X like already out of the discussion. <laughs> Me too. All right. So let's, let's, let's go down to like a more fun matchup, like Jaws and Predator. So, um, I really, I'd have to, I have to go with Predator on that one, dude. I just, All right, I and I would pick, I would go with Jaws because it's my favorite creature feature. Jamie, yeah. what do you think? Okay, so this is where this is where we weigh in now because they yeah disagree. Exactly. This is where we weigh in? Yeah. I, All right. Uh, All right. So I, I know how much you love Jaws. I and I, I love Predator. So <laughs> here, here's why. Here's why my vote is Predator. This is why my vote is Predator because. Be- well before I had seen Jaws, my dad, my dad and I, as a kid, we watched movies together all the time. He hates horror movies, but we watched all types of action movies, specifically nice. Schwarzenegger and Stallone. So mm-hmm. he sat me down and we watched Alien versus Predator and the OG Predator back to back to back. And what's oh, yeah. amazing about Predator is you think it's an action movie at first, but then it just pulls the rug and reveals it's a fucking horror movie. That's brilliant brilliant to me shane black wrote an amazing movie so i'm gonna have to go with predator i do love jaws steven spielberg did an amazing fucking job with jaws but predator was just a better story because it made me go wait what (laughs) (laughs) i mean okay this is really hard for me as well because i love both these movies and as much as i love jaws I, I gotta go with Predator because you don't know if you were to actually see it for the first time, you don't know what you're getting into. Exactly. Predator, Predator with the upset. Lot, Predator yeah. had a lot more better uh, sequels than Jaws did. So also, they we uh, found that's, out that that's a low bearing fruit. Right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jaws we, and Jaws two. We don't talk about the rest. Yeah. Hey, we, David, we also found out that tobacco will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus, just that like me. <laughs> Dylan, you son of a bitch! <laughs> that was the <laughs> like that was the best scene. Like, the all right, I was the matter. See, I ain't pushing you too many pencils. <laughs> Stick around. <That> old- <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go. Bracket? We're gonna go to Dawn of the Dead and Trick or Treat. Um, my vote is gonna go to Dawn of the Dead just because I Personal really work. don't like anthologies. Um, and obvi- I mean, I think as far as anthologies go, Trick or Treat's very good, but it just it's not for me. And I think Dawn of the Dead is such an iconic, like genre specific, like launched zombies into like the stratosphere, which is something that still is popular today. So I just, I would go with Dawn of the Dead. I agree. Yeah. I mean, it's trick or treat is nowhere near Dawn of the Dead, <laughs> not even in the same realm. It's a great movie, but nowhere near close to Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. I mean, the, the special effects in that movie were fucking nuts at the time, you know? 
Fair enough. Fair enough. So I don't think we need it. We don't need a, a, a an input on that one because I think we agree on we'll just move on for the, from Dawn of the Dead. Um, Killer Clowns and Ads Above So Below. This one is tough for me because <laughs> As Above So Below is my favorite found footage, and I've gotten really into found footage over the past couple of years. But Killer Clowns is so iconic. I just yeah. don't know if you can vote against that in this case. So I'm gonna have to go. You know what? I am. I'm gonna go with As Above So Below. That's my vote. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude! It's killer clowns from outer space. I mean, I all right. Let's hear. Let's hear. Else. Let's hear from. Let's hear from Jamie and and crew. As somebody, as somebody who hasn't seen as above, so below. Um, I don't know if I can weigh in on this, but I will say, uh, from what I've seen from the trailers, and I have seen the trailers for as above, so below. It does look look like it would scare the shit out of me. So it is something I would probably, I would definitely watch, and I definitely enjoy, but. The types of movies that I watch are those bullshit <laughs> sci-fi Sharknado, <laughs> thanks killing, and Killer Clowns. I feel like is the godfather of all those independent. Like this is so goofy, but I love those types yes. of movies. When you <laughs> when you're when you're when you're killing somebody with a pizza box, a puppet shadow, and cotton candy, how am I supposed to argue against that? So my <laughs> vote, true. regardless of what effort was sir. going up against, <laughs> will be Killer Clowns. That's fair. You know, I'm not hey, mad I about losing it. that one. I've seen Our... them both, and Killer Clowns is just iconic. Sorry. No, that's good. That's fair. Like I said, I'm not <laughs> mad about losing that. I'm not mad about that. So let's go yeah. over to the other side here, and let's go with Alien, the original, the first movie that ever really scared the bejesus out of me um, with the chestburster and Jack Brooks' Monster Slayer, which I haven't seen. So I can't say I would vote for that one, but I don't see – even if I had how it could probably top Alien, which probably could be our number one seed, um, you know, at 1A next to Halloween. So my vote yeah. is for Alien. I mean, I, I, of course, have to agree with that. I will say, though, that Jack Brooks Monster Slayer is a fantastic movie. It does have Robert Englund in it. Okay. And it's just Dude, when he turns into that big thing at the end, oh, my God. That. Like, yeah, like, he's just a guy with anger management issues. And so, like, he goes to night school for something. <laughs> And Robert England is a teacher that somehow gets turned into this giant monster and like starts eating people in the classroom. Like he yep. either eats them yep. or he like shoots a tentacle in them and like causes them to kind of turn almost into like deadites where they're running around the school chasing after this dude. And, it, and like I said, the guy's got anger management, so you can put two and two together. I mean, it's a great fucking movie, but it's nowhere alien. Right. Of it's it's a right. fun movie, but alien. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to it's on my sure. list. I just yeah, I got my pen out and I was like, all right, let's write down Jack Brooks. So um, it will be on my list to watch, um, but we'll go with Alien there. All right. So we're uh, moving on to let me slide this over here so I can see. You. There we go. All right. This one is either going to go really well or I'm going to kick you both <laughs> off the podcast um, because the Lost Boys because the Lost Boys is my favorite horror of all time and I know it's horror comedy um, Lost Boys will have my vote every time I do love Dream Warriors these are both my picks but I would pick Lost Boys in this case okay well I'm because I want Jamie to weigh in on this one so I'm going to go with Nightmare <laughs> all right Jamie Lost no, Boys, no, but no pressure you, so. no pressure all right so here's the deal here's the deal Freddy Krueger is my absolute favorite, favorite oh, horror <laughs> icon of all time. And Dream Master, not Dream Warriors, Dream Master is actually my favorite top five favorite horror movies of all time. So I fucking love Freddy Krueger. And Dream Warriors was probably, it's not my personal favorites, but I understand why it was the best in the entire series. Now, the whole puppet thing. That mm-hmm. was the, probably the most creative fucking kill in that entire thing. Oh, and I love the idea of all those people coming together and beating the shit out of Freddy Krueger. That was something that Peter Jackson wrote for a sixth movie, but they end up getting Freddy's dead. And having said all that, I saw the Lost Boys in theaters, and the last line of the movie, my jaw dropped to the fucking floor when he goes, Man, it's great living here, except for all the damn vampires. <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker, you actually knew about this right. shit? One thing I could never That's one thing I could never stomach. When my, when my jaw drops to the floor for 10 minutes straight, I kind of have to give it to Lost Boys. Freddy is fun, but Dream Warriors isn't my favorite. The Lost Boys, that, that whole ending just made me go, what everybody, the fuck? Everybody loves it. 
Everybody loves that movie. That's oh, God, so yeah, also that's whenever he like grandpa runs the truck in and like with the yeah. like shooting these giant <laughs> yeah. like fence posts. <laughs> <laughs> like that's amazing. That, that's like, and I, you know, someone uh, actually it was uh, just a real and, quick and, tangent. And, and it had a kick-ass soundtrack. Yes, oh, hundred percent. It had a great, it had a great soundtrack. Hundred percent on on a tangent. Like I had a, a TikTok person who was like, uh, tried to tell me Near Dark was better because Near Dark had a better cast. You know, with Lance Hendrickson and Jeanette Goldstein and uh, Bill Paxton. And I was like, well, hold on a minute. Do you really want to look at the Lost Boys cast? Like the Lost Boys cast right. was outstanding as well. Like we're comparing apples and oranges here. One of these is like an 80s horror comedy. One of these is like an 80s vampire Western where the word vampire was never actually said in the movie. So like these are two different like you can't compare them. You can't compare way, them, yeah. but I thought it was interesting. <laughs> right, anyway. So- all right, so we're bond to the the two versus the fifteen. Alcohol. He'll be right back. Oh, you're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. All right, so we've got the thing and the number two seed against Ernest Scared Stupid. This is also another fifteen, like <laughs> that. I wish I hadn't didn't have as such a like against such, <laughs> such a great a movie. Yeah, because I love Ernest Scared Stupid. Like the fact that fucking milk is what d- like deters these, and the fact that they use the same masks from Killer Clowns, Killer Clowns is yeah. ah. I love the thing so much, and we just saw it in theaters, and it, it like took on a whole new like uh, respect for it, seeing it on yes. a big screen. Like, and I have to go for the thing. The thing yeah. for sure, yeah. Like, there's no way. But I want to hear <laughs> Jamie. I want to hear your guys' oh. input and your thoughts on Ernest Scared Stupid. <laughs> oh my fucking! God. So rated gem for sure. Yes. So going back to the video <laughs> rental store. So we had. So I grew up in Dyersville, and we had what they called Stone Creek Video Rental. And what was interesting about their thing, it was part of a, um, it was part of a, a, clo- a, a cosmetic uh, store. It was, it mm-hmm. was the half section of that. But they printed all their tapes on like these little laminated cards like this. You pick, pick your card up and you take it to the, uh, okay. to the front and they yeah. had all the covers on. But they had like 10, I, not even 10, they must have had like five or six different earnest movies and scared stupid, I would get constantly. And I fucking love that joke about Miak. <laughs> Absolutely love that joke. <laughs> Ernest is such, Ernest was, was my childhood. Ernest scared stupid isn't even uh, my favorite. It's Ernest goes to school is my favorite. Oh, that's a good one. It's too. him. Uh, it's, it's not even the top three, but I just uh, love that movie. <laughs> I love that movie because Will Salso's in that movie and he just, Picks on him constantly. Everybody knows it's camp, jail, and scared stupid. Oh, dude. Oh, j- See, That's jail true. is fantastic, yeah. too, because who the hell gets so happy about going to jury duty? <laughs> <laughs> and when they throw the dog away, he's like, who would want to throw away a perfectly good dog? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> also, like, so in the in Ernest Scared Stupid, you know, his dog, his name is Rimshot. Yeah. And if you listen Rim to him, shot. Yelling, yeah, when you hear him yelling in the beginning when he's in the garbage truck, my wife, she's like, I swear to God, he's yelling rim job, rim job, rim job, <laughs> rim, rim job. job. <laughs> Dude, I love when he pulls the battery out of the thing and then the little the, the energy goes with yeah. the battery in the thing. He's like, ah! Like, okay, I, as much like, as we love this movie. Of, like the Three Stooges and Mr. Bean combined. I loved <laughs> Ernest as a kid. I All still right. love Ernest. Sorry, Ernest. I think we agree the thing is probably the better movie here and the more like rewatch. I don't know. It's just a masterpiece. Wait, yeah. Okay, so yeah. you really got me on eight and nine, though. So let's see what you guys think, though. So this is a tough one. Yeah. Um. So Ooh. I hadn't watched Child's Play in so long. I don't know. David, you go first. I, <sighs> as much. As I love Evil Dead, I kind of have to go with Child's Play because the first movie is so iconic to me. Like, I watched that movie at a very young age when I should not have been watching movies like that. And that's one of the first four movies I remember seeing, probably four or five years old. And it was just a fucking weird experience for me. It was it was <laughs> a lot of nightmares and stuff. So I love the original one so much. And I, I watch it every year for Halloween. And it's still, like, creepy as fuck to me. Like, I know you're like, oh, I'll just beat the shit out of that, that doll. It's like, come on, man. Chucky Not is a bitch. Real. Not if it was real. Like, yes. Yeah. You know, more in the sequels, for sure, because he's more of like a jokester and like yeah. don't take him as serious. Yeah, that first movie. I, I'm not the biggest fan of Chucky. I think he's overrated. I know, but the first movie's great. Like the first movie was movies. really good. I did it, like the first I'll one give, a lot. I'll give you that, but I just think him as a concept is very overrated. 
See, yeah. yeah. He, I'll, many, I'll wait. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you guys say what you guys say. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I I, I, I got to go child's play, man. I'm sorry. All right, so you're going child's play. I'll go. I'll go Evil Dead, just because I think Bruce Campbell is a fucking icon. I love Bruce Campbell so much. I think his ability to make this to t- still have the comedic elements and his delivery i think is a masterpiece i think evil dead 2 is my favorite in the franchise then evil dead then army of darkness i think they're all a fantastic but i mean yeah. i don't know i've I, everything i've ever seen bruce campbell in like fucking bubba hotep dude he's a genius like all of this shit is so good like i just bruce campbell alone i'm gonna go evil dead mm-hmm. by the way you ever seen the man with the screaming brain i have not uh-uh. Or Alien Apocalypse. Those are two Bruce Campbell movies you should check out. Or the Van Helsing movies. Yeah. Oh, Christ, I forgot about that one. <laughs> the vampire one. <laughs> so, I'll start with Child's Play. <laughs> to me, Freddy vs. Jason is where I was introduced to the idea of horror movies or something that at least legitimately scared me. Chucky was the second thing that I had seen. I like the first movie for it being a um, it, it's it's not really it could it's not really a horror movie it's almost like a detective movie like like a suspense thriller mm-hmm. to me you're like is this actually happening is he going to get away with it there's not really mm-hmm. a whole lot of blood and gore mm-hmm. but it is a very very well done movie but I am a bigger fan of part two because he gets the shit beat out of him in that doll factory. I yeah. absolutely, those the last 15 minutes of child's play two makes that one of my top five favorite horror movies of all time. So child's right play on. two nightmare on Elm street Four, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Just, just to name a few of my favorite horror films of all time. Evil dead two. On the other hand, if you watch the first evil dead movie, skip two, watch army of darkness. You're like, wait a second. This is part of the same universe. Right. Because the third one is, is so Three Stooges slapsticky without all the gore and stuff. You're like, where was the bridge in between that? Mm-hmm. Evil Dead 2 still retained the horror while going into that comedy. Exactly. And I love I love Bruce Campbell. I'm gonna have to give it to Evil Dead 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now it's when it starts to get really, really hard. That's what she <gasps> said. Yep. <laughs> um okay so let's go with the Ooh, classic showdown i think down here in the bottom with alien, alien predator. versus predator i like how that works out <laughs> i yeah. like how that works out um i think i'm gonna have to go i'm gonna have, i'm gonna go alien here by like a sliver um i think that alien like to me like predator is almost like and this is the argument I use David all the time where he's like, God, that's so stupid. Like aliens is an action movie with horror elements and alien was like a more of a horror movie to me. I feel like alien is more traditional horror and I feel like it's more suspenseful. Whereas predator is like an, is an action movie with obviously there are some, there's horror elements, but I think t- if yeah. I'm going to go with the challenge here, I'm going to go with alien. And it's also my personal favorite over predator. It's close, but I go alien. Uh-huh. I'm gonna. I have to 100% agree. I love both franchises. Um, I do love the Alien franchise a little bit more than I do Predator. We, and we, so we gonna, go? yeah, I gotta do. I gotta go with Alien. Yep. Okay. All right. Un- unfortunately, uh, gentlemen, um, it is it is time for us uh, to actually all good. go out. There. Oh, it's all good. All man. good. I appreciate yeah, you coming on. Just... We appreciate you, David, and I might finish this up, but yeah, Thank I appreciate you, you guys coming on and talking about the movie. Thank and... you for letting us be to at least getting to that point of the bracket. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much for joining. Yeah, and we'll thanks, post. Thanks I'll, for I'll having send, us. Take care. I'll guys. send you the video, Jamie. Thanks so much. Yeah, man. Thank you guys. Yes, please. Thank you. All right. Take all right, care. Have y'all. fun tonight. Later. Bye, guys. Take care. Yeah. Bye. All right. Okay. Let's see. All right. The thing in the Lost Boys, man. This is this is a tough one. I already, yeah, I want to see where you're going to sway on this one. Like, to me, it's like, it's two movies that I consider 10 out of 10. Yep. And now it goes down to like, to me, it's like, okay, what's a, what's a better, the better movie? Okay. Better soundtrack. That's debatable because I think one of them is a soundtrack with actual songs. One of them is like a score, right? Exactly. Yeah. And Ennio, Ennio, his name was, I forget his name, Ennio Marcosio. It's like an Italian, direct, Italian, um, <laughs> composer that did the thing uh, and the th- ah, god damn it i'm gonna go the thing you're gonna go with the thing 
I, uh, I mean, I, I have to as well because yeah. if you were to say, "Hey, here's these two movies," which would you want to watch first? Right. I try to. I'm trying to take my like <laughs> my bias out of it. Like, if I'm watching these yeah. movies and I'm completely objective, and I've never seen either of them. I think that the one that honestly i think the one that appeals to more people is the lost boys because i think it's just more like relatable Absolutely. from being like a horror comedy it's it's more palatable right yeah. whereas the thing is definitely more graphic and definitely like has more to it but i think i think if you just look at everything from practical effects to the casting i think it's just a better movie sorry Absolutely. yeah yeah sorry. all right yeah, baby oh no parker sorry everyone you... <laughs> Parker, what's a better movie, Killer Clowns or Dawn of the Dead? <sighs> Say Killer Clowns. I'm gonna go Killer Clowns. There. It's. I mean, as much as I love Romero, <clears throat> I mean, Killer Clowns is is a ten out of ten for me. So I love the fuck out of that movie. <laughs> I agree, a hundred percent. Um, and then Evil Dead and the original Halloween. I honestly, I don't think this is as close as the others. This is easy for me as Halloween. Right. Okay, now, now is where it gets interesting. <laughs> a, it's funny how we've got like like serious slasher versus like comedy versus like aliens and aliens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you've got like but, okay, I mean, these killer clowns are aliens as well. So that that is true. That is technically true. So we've got the thing, okay, eighty two, and we've got yep. Alien seventy nine. So we get within a couple years of each other. Um, one's in space and one's in the Arctic. Um, both like isolation factors, which I think is a kind of a cool idea. Um, I'm gonna probably maybe go the direction you might not think I would. I'm gonna choose the thing. I uh, I, that's what I was thinking you were gonna do, and I'm kind of convincing myself to do the same. As much as I love Alien, like, but the thing was just so fucking great. Like the practical effects, the story, like just the atmosphere of. All these guys trapped yep. in fucking sub sub temperatures, and like you don't know who is what. Like anybody could be infected, anybody could be the killer, and so it's when they you know get revealed. That's where you're like, oh shit, it was that guy. I was thinking it was this guy. And it's that's just... that's what put it over the top for me was the fact <laughs> yeah. that you could, you have arguments happening in 2024 about who was the ending. <laughs> like at the ending <laughs> of that movie. Whereas at yeah. the ending of Alien, you knew you were like, all right, like. She blew it into space. She survived. I mean, until the second exactly. one, you got some more background. But yeah, I'm going to go the things. I think we agree there. And then yep. <sighs> this one might be a little bit tough, maybe tougher for you, because I feel like these are, um, I think, like, I look, I look at this from one perspective. What's the movie that every single year without fail I watch? And that's Halloween. Every oh, year. Yeah. Every single year. And if it's on TV... It's one of those movies where if you are if you only had one movie to watch for the rest of your life, I could watch it on repeat. Yeah, I can. Uh, be- I mean, it's got a great score. It's got great just atmosphere. Like, it's it's just such a fantastic fucking movie. Like, I do have to pick Halloween as well, as much as I love Killer Clowns. But Halloween is what got me to love horror movies. Yep, the original that's- Halloween. So. That's that's up there for me. So now we have our championship between Oof. Halloween from 1978 and the Thing from the 1982. Thing. And it's uh it this one's gonna be hard too because I as much as I you know love Halloween, I also love the Thing too. And I think the Thing is just such a a fun fucking movie to watch. Like yep, it's this is gonna be tough. <laughs> yeah i'm i'm going back and forth on it i think like i feel like everyone would be like oh you guys totally copped out and picked the fi- halloween for your favorite right. horror movie it's, it's almost it's yeah. everyone's favorite and... but i mean i think i i like rewatchability and my favorite i would pick halloween but once again right. i'm trying to look at this objectively and i i think that the thing is a better movie i think the thing is a 10 out of 10 halloween for me is a 9 out of 10 i'm gonna go the thing okay i'm uh shit <laughs> has lynn seen both of these movies she had i think so lynn have you seen the original halloween and you saw and you remember the thing that movie with kurt kurt russell yeah. which one do you think is better Halloween. She went with Halloween. <laughs> Whatever, Lynn. Your opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> Ryan goes, Whatever, Lynn. Your opinion doesn't matter. 
Uh, I think for the sake of us not having a long, drawn out argument over this, I think no, I... no. Pick, pick. I'll, res- <laughs> I'll respect. I'll respect the third party. I know where she votes, but I'll respect the third party. If you think Halloween is better, you go with go with what you believe. But it's like, I mean, I love it. But it like, like I said, it got me loving horror. But it's like, I, it's love in a different way. Like I love watching a thing because I love seeing aliens kill and eat people <laughs> like and and the I, practical effects are insane are fucking insane <laughs> and there's so, almost no blood in halloween i'm not saying it has to be like a determining factor but like right, the halloween no, no, is no. more like uh it, to me it's kind of like psychological so it's it's the old style of like what you don't mm-hmm. see is the scary part exactly which makes it great but i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna roll with the thing as well i mean that's yes the thing it's such a fucking great movie (laughs) there we have it the horror bracket of death is complete i'm gonna take a snapshot of this and be like this many hours spent pouring into this (laughs) this respect friendships on the line (laughs) that's right we almost had to kick someone off a podcast because they were gonna vote against uh the lost Lost Boys, boys but (laughs) <laughs> anyway, so cool. All right. Well, I've got this. I'm going to save it this time. Let me. Yeah, um, let's not. Let's uh, not lose it this time. Let's stop the share. Of, yeah. Of what else we ahead. had on the original one that we missed? Which one? Oh, yeah. On our remember. original bracket. I think there was something we missed. Like, I think there was. I feel like there was something else on there, too. Like, and it was probably up. some banger. I think it was a Friday. No, because we had. No, Jason wasn't it? Wasn't Scream on there? I don't like think they, I feel like they I thought I, put, I thought I put I thought I selected Scream for like a like a lower like 11 or something like that. Maybe? Maybe. Cuz Scream, I mean Scream's one of my faves, but I, that's the only thing I can yeah. think of. I was like Scream, maybe cuz I remember you picked we picked Alien over Aliens cuz we thought it was more horror. Oh yeah, more traditional um, horror, so. But anyway, so right on. All right, well our first first guest is in the book. Yay. Bye. Bye. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Bye.